The film begins with massive anti-American protest demonstrations occurring across Europe after the revelation of American intelligence activities in their countries through various media, as well as the killing of two vocal critics highlighting the actions of American intelligence. Is the CIA murdering journalists? German journalist Greta Becker was found dead. The Prime Minister of Greece, Kostas Leontaris, is one of the people who strongly condemns the American attitude which he considers intolerant of the sovereignty of other countries with their illegal secret intelligence activities in other nations. In a hotel in Greece, a senior journalist and vocal critic highlighting the foreign intelligence activities of America named Becker meets a mysterious man invited because he possesses evidence of American scandals. After providing the evidence to Becker, the mysterious man suddenly kills Becker. The one to do the telling. It turns out this man is the one who has been revealing CIA secrets to journalists. At the CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia, an agent named Kate reviews CCTV footage from a station near the hotel where critic Becker was killed. The next day, Kate reports to CIA Director O'Malley. From the CCTV footage, she identifies a man named Redek, a Greek citizen who was formerly a CIA secret agent and was believed to have died 18 months ago. Meanwhile, in Philadelphia, Steve, a construction worker, is seen renovating the roof of a building while listening to Blackpink, a Korean girl band, through his headset. During his lunch break, O'Malley surprises him. It turns out that Steve is a former CIA secret agent who had served in Greece. After explaining the situation, O'Malley suspects Radek is behind all the murders. It seems Radek wants the world to think that the CIA also committed the critic's murder. Steve, who witnessed Radek's death and was the one executing him, initially denied it until O'Malley convinced him by showing evidence of Radek's face on CCTV footage. O'Malley asked Steve to return to Greece with Kate to resolve the issue. Kate objected, considering Steve seemed inexperienced. Likewise, Steve is tired of state affairs and reluctant to partner with Kate, who he thought would be a burden. She wouldn't last 24 hours on the ground. At night, while working, Steve suddenly got attacked by Redek's men. A shot hit his stomach. When trying to escape, he found two armed men approaching him. Fortunately, Steve managed to incapacitate both armed men. <laughs> After killing them, there was still one man left. Steve suddenly appeared from behind and attacked the man. Steve then succeeded in killing him and escaped at that moment. The next day, Steve changed his mind and decided to go to Greece with Kate. On the plane, Kate checked files about Redek that stated Steve's agent shot Redek, and his body fell into the agent's sea, and they never found his body. The documents also contained photos of the dead bodies of Redek's child and wife, who were murdered. When they arrived at Filippo's airport in Kozeni, Greece, they planned to go to a location the CIA had determined using a car provided to them. But on the way, Steve changed direction and stopped at his old friend's place named Patricio. Patricio is the person who usually provides equipment for each of his missions. You're looking good. Yeah, lots of hard. questioned Steve's decision to change the plan on his own. Steve insisted that if they wanted to find Radek, Kate had to follow his method. You want to find Radek? We need to do it the right way. They would pretend to be a married couple who are shipping magnates. After selecting the necessary weapons and acquiring new identities, Steve and Kate now in disguise, were surprised to receive a turbocharged Mercedes as their vehicle. Now, Kate and Steve arrived in Thessaloniki and stayed in a luxury hotel. Upon their arrival at the hotel, Steve kindly offered Kate to take a shower and rest for a while. It was just a trick by Steve to deceive Kate and secretly, Steve went to a church, leaving behind the mobile phone given by Kate so he couldn't be tracked. There Steve remembered the times when he used to be friends with the Redek family. Redek had even given him a vinyl record of his favorite music, Midland. Next, Steve went to a party event to meet with his old friend, who is also a CIA agent named Ty. Steve asked for information about the location of a mafia member who had been a reliable informant for Redek during his service. As a friend, Ty gave all the information needed. That same night, Steve headed straight to a club owned by Sten, the former informant, However, getting information about Redek's whereabouts became difficult because this informant had become a millionaire and felt no need to give any information to Steve, especially since there were always many guards protecting him. Oh, it's going to be hard for you to leave again. A fight occurred, and Steve managed to defeat each guard one by one without using weapons. Ah! Ah! 
Steve found himself overwhelmed by the continuously arriving guards, forcing him to leave the place quickly. Fortunately, Kate arrived just in time and immediately took Steve away. Kate was angry because Steve acted alone and left her at the hotel. However, Steve said he had placed a tracker on the person who would lead them to meet with Redek. On their way, Kate asked why the CIA targeted Redek. The file says that Redek went rogue. What happened? Steve explained that Redek had once pretended to be a mediator for the Russian and Greek mafia, with a promise that the CIA would provide asylum for his family. However, his cover got blown, leading to the Russian mafia killing his wife and child. Since then, Redek mercilessly killed the Russian mafia members in Greece for their actions. Eventually, the CIA sent Steve to kill him. At the same time, Ty received an email containing video evidence of the CIA's conspiracies in various countries. To prevent the video from spreading to massive media, Redick demanded a ransom of $100 million in Bitcoin. Meanwhile, Kate and Steve managed to track down Sten's residence because of a tracking device Steve had slipped into his jacket when they met at the club. Kate and Steve managed to enter to look for clues about Redick's whereabouts. Steve noticed something odd about one of the walls. He opened a part of the stone and found the belongings of critics whom Redek had killed. Among them was a newspaper featuring another critic who was likely Redek's next target. While reading the document, suddenly, Sten's assistant entered the house and fortunately, they managed to hide. When the man was careless, Steve took the opportunity to attack him. However, when Kate had the chance to shoot the man, she froze because she suddenly felt afraid to shoot. Kate ended up getting hurt after being beaten and thrown. Steve was overwhelmed fighting the guard, using up all his energy, but in the end, thanks to the scriptwriter and director of this film, Steve managed to kill the guard. <laughs> in short, the next day, they successfully tracked the next target's location in Emporio Square, whom Redek was going to kill. The critic appeared to be relaxing in a cafe, not far from where Patricio, whom Steve had asked for help, was watching. Meanwhile, Steve and Kate, who were also at the same location, tried to find Redek. Soon after, Redek contacted Steve, and the two of them talked to each other. Here, it became known that 18 months ago, Steve did not kill Redek but faked his friend's death instead. Steve did not expect Redek to reappear to seek revenge on the CIA. The main reason for Redek's revenge was because his cover got blown in the past due to the actions of a CIA senior official. While continuing to communicate, Steve finally found a man resembling Redek. However, it turned out to be just a decoy, and they were deceived. A little while later, Radek succeeded in killing a critic and escaped. Steve managed to knock Radek off his motorcycle, but Radek escaped. However, they managed to obtain a tablet belonging to Radek that was found on his bike. Due to this incident, Kate was angry because earlier, Steve had acted recklessly. However, there was another important matter they needed to discuss. After killing his target, Redek had thrown a photo, and the person in that photo was one of the CIA's latest targets. A question arose about how Redek got the secret of the CIA's latest target. Now you're starting to ask the right questions. Steve then went to Ty's house, where it turned out they had once been lovers. Steve tried to persuade Ty to leave with him, but on that time, Ty said she preferred to stay because O'Malley had offered her the position as the head of the CIA station in Greece. Then Steve revealed the fact from Redek that it was the CIA itself that had leaked his cover to the Mafia. Ty was not surprised by this information because she had been informed just before becoming the head of the CIA in Greece. The CIA argued that this was an action they had to take because Redek had once refused a task given to him. Later, the story moves to a flashback where Redek refuses a task given by the CIA. At that time, the CIA had promoted Redek and asked him to carry out a new mission to kill a Greek politician. Redek refused the order because he had only killed people who clearly committed crimes like mafias and gangsters. Because of his refusal, the CIA elite his real identity to the mafia. As a result, Redek lost his child and wife because the Russian mafia killed them. When returning to the hotel, Kate points a gun at Steve because she suspects that Steve is the mastermind behind the murder of the critics. This suspicion is based on the CCTV footage of the crime scene yesterday, where Steve appeared to be communicating with Redek. Quickly, Steve snatches the gun from Kate and then turns the gun around to prove that if he wanted to kill Kate, it wouldn't be difficult for him. Steve says although he didn't kill Redek, it doesn't mean he was working with him. That night, they visited Patricio's warehouse to find out what was on Redek's tablet they had gotten the day before. But strangely, Patricio didn't answer his phone, even though his beloved dog seemed to be there. It turned out that Patricio had died with his hands tied, and his body even had a bomb attached. 
Luckily, Steve managed to handle the bomb. Not long after, Stanton and his men also arrived there. A shootout happened where Steve and Kate split up to kill the enemies one by one. Steve killed most of Sten's men. <laughs> Suddenly, Sten catched Kate and threatened to kill her unless Steve surrendered. Steve agreed to offer on the condition that Sten release Kate. After her release, Steve told Kate to leave immediately because he would be okay. Steve threw the bond from his body and succeeded in killing Sten and all his men. Kate, who had been very worried about Steve's safety, finally realized that Steve was not an ordinary former CIA agent. On their way home, it received news that the CIA agreed to pay $100 million to prevent Redek from leaking their secrets. O'Malley arrived at the CIA office in Greece to deliver a hard drive containing Bitcoin for the transaction. O'Malley asked Kate to hand over the hard drive and to fire Steve for causing a mess that attracted public attention in Greece. Without wasting time, Kate headed to the specified location. There she found a phone showing the next area that ended in a basement. As she was about to go to the basement, Steve suddenly appeared and asked Kate to switch places with him. Steve, going down to the basement, found a computer. When the hard drive containing Bitcoin was plugged in, the computer immediately activated a video call from Redek, who said that he had suspected it would be Steve who would be there. Their friendship fell apart because Steve failed to protect Redek's family. As a final act of revenge, Redek planned to kill the Prime Minister of Greece, which would corner the CIA and could lead to international conflict. After the transaction ended, the door suddenly closed, and Steve found a bomb under the table, ready to explode. With little time, Steve looked for ways to minimize the explosion's impact and ultimately survived. Radek, in a car, tried to hit Steve but missed because Steve managed to dodge. Again, thanks to a great director, at the same moment, Kate arrived in their car. A chase ensued through narrow streets, almost causing Steve to lose sight of Radek. Steve took a shortcut and broke through a road barrier, then crashed his car into Radex, causing it to overturn. Yet again, Radex managed to escape. Knowing Radex's next target, Steve immediately heads to the field where the Prime Minister of Greece is. Amidst the crowd, he tries to find Radex, who will soon attempt to kill the Prime Minister. After looking in various directions, Steve finally sees Radex disguised as one of the journalist can rim and with a camera he is modified into a weapon. Racing against time, Steve grabs a hammer and then knocks down the pole where Redek is standing. After successfully bringing down Redek and injuring one of his hands, Steve asked Redek to stop all his actions. However, Redek again takes something from behind his jacket, forcing Steve to end the life of his friend. It turns out the object was a family photo of Redek with Steve when they were still friends. Suddenly, two policemen who saw Steve as a threat fired their guns. <laughs> Fortunately, Steve survived and when he woke up in the hospital, Kate and O'Malley were also there. O'Malley found a recording of Redek confessing to killing the Greek Prime Minister on CIA orders. They secured the recording before the Greek authorities could see it. O'Malley thanked Steve even though the money sent to Redek had disappeared. After O'Malley left, Kate suspected that O'Malley had stolen money and had been helping Redek because Redek had worked under O'Malley's command in the past. The next two nights, Steve sneaked into Ty's apartment and saw Ty packed up and planning to leave Greece. Steve's visit was only to meet his ex-lover. Unexpectedly, he found a vinyl record that Redek had given to Steve before. There Steve realized that Ty was the one leaking CIA secrets and helping Redek. Ty sold CIA secret information to get ransom money. At the same time, Ty had sent several people to kill Steve. Before they could enter the apartment, Steve opened a cassette box that contained explosives he had previously stored in Ty's apartment. He put the explosives in the oven and quickly left through the balcony. When Ty's men managed to enter the apartment, a huge explosion occurred. Because of the massive blast, Steve fell from the balcony and got injured. Seeing this, Ty tried to run over Steve. Luckily, Kate appeared again and managed to shoot Ty, causing his car to overturn, and Steve was able to survive. In short, for her good performance in carrying out her duties, O'Malley promoted Kate. However, having learned a lot from her experiences with Redek and Ty, Kate decided to resign from the CIA. Bye. Meanwhile, Steve went back to repairing the building's construction that was damaged during the fight with Redek's men. The movie ends there.